Hello and welcome to the Scatterful channel and today let's revisit the RTX 4060 Ti in 2023 now that its main competition is finally out that being the new Radeon RX 7700 XT which I have right here. Both of these graphics cards cost about the same price of $400 and there are some pretty stark differences between the two which should make for a very exciting GPU comparison video. But this video wouldn't be complete without the third graphics card that costs in this same price range that you can still buy for brand new and arguably deserves to have its spotlight, that being the Radeon RX 6800. This has eight gigabytes of VRAM, this has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and this has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and all can be bought for within $50. So in this three-way GPU shootout video, I'll be comparing all of their gaming performances at 1080p and 1440p, and even diving into which GPUs will be the best for streaming, which will be the best for content creation, and other media stuff. So we'll get right into this video right after a word from our sponsor. If you're looking for the best case fan there is, period, then look no farther than Cooler Master's Mobius 120OC. It's been recorded by numerous tech outlets that the Mobius 120OC is the best case fan there is out there when it comes to thermal performance and overall noise. And I've been so convinced by its performance that I'm not gonna have two of these right below my RTX 4090 to provide the most airflow to it for the best performance possible. And if the Mobius 120 OC is a little bit too hardcore for you, then there are other versions of it, like the regular Mobius, the 120p, and even the 140p. But I also want to give a shout out to Cooler Master's GX3 power supply. These come in a 650 watt, 750, and 850 watt variants, and these are not just your typical power supplies. They feature an innovative and streamlined design that not only look cool, but can even help its own thermal performance with that interesting hexagonal mesh, which can help its ventilation and even features an optimized heat sink inside of it that can allow it to run five degrees cooler. Also, it comes with its own special 90 degree ATX 3.0 power supply cable, which should really eliminate any possible troubles that could arise with certain graphics cards that use that connector and also allows it to run a little bit cooler as well. And once again, it is an 80 plus gold power supply at the end of the day, so it's gonna deliver in terms of efficiency, saving you a bit of power at the end of the day. So if any of these Cooler Master products interest you, then I'll have them all linked in the description below. Okay, and I was not joking. There are quite a few differences between all three of these graphics cards, of course, starting with memory. Here we have the RTX 4060 Ti in its 8 gigabyte model. This also comes in a 16 gigabyte model, but in my opinion, it is not that much different because the memory bus width is still the same. Both of those models come with a 128 bit memory bus, meaning that the memory bandwidth is still 228 gigabytes per second. So the situation doesn't change much on the 4060 Ti, even if you upgrade to 16 gigabytes of memory, which is what the Radeon RX 6800 has. So this is the next most expensive graphics card in this video, which you can get for as low as $430. And this is 16 gigabytes of VRAM, GDDR6, 256 bit memory bus, but then we have a graphics card that kind of sits in the middle, that being the new RX 7700 XT, which costs the most out of this entire lineup at $450 and comes with 12 gigabytes of memory with a 192 bit memory bus. Now, as for some other differences, the 4060 Ti and 7700 XT both come with the AV1 codec, which definitely has its advantages, which we'll be covering later in this video, whereas the last generation RX 6800 doesn't and the 7700 XT and 4060 Ti are gonna be better for ray tracing because they are newer, whereas the 6800 is older, yet this graphics card has more VRAM than both of these. So I'm really excited to show you guys the results, which I'll start off on Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p, which by the way, we're using a 7800 X3D for all of these benchmarks. Here, the RX 6800 wins with an average frame rate of 118, with the 7700 XT and 4060 Ti closely matched at a second and third place. And if we bump up the resolution to 1440p, the same is inferred. The RX 6800 does take the win here at 97.1 on the average frame rate, but the 7700 XT does have a bit of a lead over the 4060 Ti at this higher resolution. 
But then if we move on to a game like Valorant, which is very much esports focused on getting just the maximum frame rate possible by all means necessary, then here with that 7800X3D at its disposal, the RX 6800 comes out on top with 713.2 frames per second, where the 7700XT comes in second and the 4060Ti comes in third, albeit at a pretty lower frame rate. All of the 1% lows are pretty similar amongst all three of the graphics cards and really you shouldn't be complaining if your graphics card is getting at least 500 frames per second on Valorant with all the graphical settings maxed out and not just 1080p, but even at 1440p where here the RX 6800 actually has a pretty big gap over the 7700 XT and once again the 4060 Ti comes in third, which still I wouldn't be complaining if my graphics card got above 300 frames per second on Valorant with everything maxed out at 1440p. But what isn't as straightforward to run is Returnal, which is a PlayStation port that was transferred over to PC earlier this year and at epic settings at 1080p, the RX 6800 and the 7700 XT are matched at about the same frame rate, although the 1% low on the RX 6800 is about 10 FPS higher. And the 4060 Ti is chilling in third place by about a 13 FPS deficit from the two. And at 1440p, the same sort of relationship is here. But once again, the 4060 Ti does have a gap between the 7700 XT and 6800, although its 1% low is about the same as the other two graphics cards. But then if we go ahead and bump up the frame rate on a slightly easier to run game like Rainbow Six Extraction at max settings, 100% resolution at 1080p. Once again, the 7700 XT and RX 6800 are dead on about the same frame rate and same 1% lows. And the 4060 Ti is kind of like, okay, have fun. <laughs> I'll be here in third place, bronze medal. But at 1440p, I think the 4060 Ti does put up a little bit more of a fight. It is a bit closer to the 7700 XT and the 6800 but that 1% low is not looking too good on the 4060 Ti at that higher resolution. But let's switch it up and do a game like Total War Warhammer 3. And here at 1080p, we get some linearity where finally the 7700 XT shows that it's the newest and probably best graphics card of the bunch on paper, getting the highest frame rate at 106.2 frames per second with the highest 1% low. And this time the 4060 Ti doesn't chill in third place. It's now actually a pretty okay second place over the RX 6800. And then if we move up to 1440p resolution, it's about the same. The 7700 XT takes the lead with a higher 1% low, but this time the 4060 Ti and 6800 are very similar with a slight edge going to the 4060 Ti. But now we gotta talk ray tracing because this is a factor that goes into your graphics card purchase, whether you like it or not, ray tracing is becoming a thing. We gotta measure it on this channel and that's why we're gonna cover Cyberpunk 2077 with the ray tracing medium preset with no upscaling, so no DLSS, no FSR, because we wanna just see the raw performance of, the, of these graphics cards to dictate which one is the faster of the three. And here, finally, the 4060 Ti shows its merits with that better architecture, better suited for ray tracing at an average frame rate of 56 at 1080p with a higher 1% low over the 7700 XT coming in second place, which is to be expected because this graphics card is newer, should have better ray tracing performance, and the 6800 coming in third. But then if we bump up the resolution to 1440p, that lead with the 4060 Ti diminishes. Now the 7700 XT is in first with the 4060 Ti in second and the RX 6800 in third. Although what I find weird, so the 1% low on the 6800 at this higher resolution is the highest of the three. So a little bit odd, but don't worry, I have another game I wanna show off with ray tracing, that being F1 2022, and at the ultra high preset, anti-shopping filtering set to 16X, no upscaling, so no FSR, no DLSS. Here, the RTX 4060 Ti does win at 1080p on the average frame rate, barely but it's 1% low is a fair bit higher, which I'm really surprised to see actually at 1080p. But the 7700 XT technically matches it on average frame rate, which is positive, but the RX 6800 is sitting at a lonely third place with a lower average frame rate, 
but the 1% low is not too bad. But then if we move up the resolution to 1440p, it's about the same thing. The 4060 Ti in this case actually loses in frame rate on the average, but its 1% low is significantly better. And the RX 6800 is, once again, kind of in third place because it's not the best when it comes to ray tracing versus the two other GPU choices. So there you have it. That is the raw performance of all three of these graphics cards. And I'm, I already know which ones are good. The 4060 Ti has a lot going against it, especially with that really crippled memory, that 128 bit memory bus, even with the 16 gigabyte model of this graphics card is not doing it any favors. And compared to these two graphics cards, which have bigger memory buses and more VRAM, are definitely holding up at higher resolutions, which is what these graphics cards in this price range should be targeted towards. And in terms of raw performance, uh, you know what? I might have to give it actually to the RX 6800. There were a few games where it had a fairly good lead over the 7700 XT for a number of reasons. And honestly, it makes the 7700 XT not the best value for $450 if you can get a brand new RX 6800 for about $20 less with four gigabytes more of VRAM, which is better for future proofing if you wanna keep a graphics card long-term when PC games eventually just eat up tons of VRAM in the near future. However, when it comes to ray tracing, I'll be honest with you, I don't like the 4060 Ti still for the reasons I just listed with its memory and its deficiencies in that matter. So I guess you could look at the 7700 XT because it has the best balance of raw performance and better ray tracing performance. So there is that, but do keep in mind, there is the 7800 XT for about $50 more that is worth looking into, which I should make an upcoming video on, on its own kind of GPU comparison, but that is gonna have better ray tracing performance for only about $50 more. So the 7700 XT, it's not looking too hot, I think. But now if we factor in other things like multimedia and streaming, you're gonna have to look at these two graphics cards. The 7700 XT and the 4060 Ti come with the AV1 codec. So not only are you gonna have the latest and greatest codec for streaming when it comes to YouTube and eventually Twitch and Kick, but even just say over Discord, if you wanna show off whatever game you're playing to your friends, Discord can utilize AV1 and produce a really clear image to your friends that is a lot better than NVEC or AMD's own AVC codec. So as far as streaming goes, I look at either of these two graphics cards, but if you are undecided, the 7700 XT is gonna be the faster graphics card between these two. But in my personal opinion, unless you're gonna be the next Ninja or you know you're gonna make it on Twitch or YouTube, quite frankly, pass these two up and just get that faster 6800 off the bat with more memory. Because even still, this does have the AMD ABC codec with Relive, and to be fair, it's not too bad. It's caught up quite a bit in comparison to NVIDIA's NVEC. Yes, it's not as good as AV1, but once again, let's be real, how many of you are running a professional streaming career? If that's you, then you shouldn't even be watching this video because you're already making tons of money and probably should go ahead and get yourself a 4080 or 4090 in that aspect. But if you're a video editor, once again, look at these two graphics cards for that AV1 codec because in programs like DaVinci Resolve, you can really speed up your timeline editing thanks to that AV1 codec when it comes to decoding and encoding footage. And I've even rendered some of my own videos with the AV1 codec in DaVinci Resolve and I really appreciate that I can achieve a really high video quality at a smaller file size when I'm uploading my videos to YouTube. So look at these two for video editing, completely pass up this one. But if you err a bit more on the side of 3D modeling, then you do have the 4060 Ti, but still like just get yourself a 4070 if you are really adamant about performing 3D modeling with an Nvidia graphics card that has CUDA cores. The 4060 Ti is just so gimped from the start. Just get yourself a 4070 because that makes more sense, has more memory, that's bigger, it's faster, please do yourself a favor. But I understand that's a very small amount of you watching this video who are professional 3D artists who do it every day. But if you do it for fun, but you're more focused on gaming, then please look at these two over the 4060 Ti. But more or less, I think overall, the 6800 is gonna have to be my choice. If you're looking for pure raw gaming performance that's gonna last you a long time, 
6800. And on that note too, the TDP of both of these graphics cards, the 7700 XT and 6800 are pretty much on par. So power draw is gonna be very similar. I guess if you live in a country that has really extreme power usage with high prices, then yeah, there's this, but you're giving up a lot for it. So really, I get one of these two, undervolt it, and you'll be a happy person at the end of the day. So there you have it. I'll have all three of these graphics cards linked in the description below. And if you've made it to this point in the video, please give it a like. That'd be awesome. There's probably a lot of other lunch day content coming out right now. And this video's kind of got to stand out. So any likes would be appreciated. And if you've enjoyed my style of commentary and this kind of GPU comparison video, then do subscribe because more of them are going to come out because my benchmarking setup is finally like working. It's making the rounds. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and this is the Scatterable Channel, signing out.